the motor industry loves niches. And today's niche is the sports car that goes weirdly off-road. This is Porsche's version. It's called the 911 Dakar. Is it rubbish or not? So the 911 Dakar is one of those cars that when I saw it announced, I thought, why? Why do you need to do that? No one needs a 911 that goes off-road and Porsche already makes several cars that go off-road. But as ever, when they make one of these bloody weird, odd niche vehicles, you drive it and you go, okay. So let me talk you through it. First of all, I'm driving it on a mixed set of surfaces. I've got uh, asphalt and I've got some loose. This is called a rallycross course, for those of you that don't know about rallycross. This is Lyndon Hill, the most historic rallycross course in the UK and the seat of some great, great racing, some big names as well. Um, it seems a quite a fitting place to drive it. Porsche rented this for the day, not me, and I'm very glad they did. I think it's a really good idea. And it does demonstrate what this thing can do. So, I've got effectively a Carrera GTS. It's 480 horsepower, but it weighs over 1,600 kilograms, quite heavy. But it feels nothing quick. It's limited to 149 miles an hour. It still does 60 in, what, about three and a bit seconds. So it's very quick. And as you can see, there's lots of wheel twirling going on. So this is back on the loose now, watch this. So if I back it in and just give it some gas in third, I mean, that is exciting. I'm sliding everywhere. I'm now about to go over a jump, watch this. Woohoohoo! And now I'm back on asphalt, watch this. So, it's four-wheel drive, but it's dead slidey. I've got this rally mode that I can put it in. If I just back it in, watch this. Fantastic fun vehicle. So dynamically, it feels great on the loose. I like the fact that the suspension is much plusher because it's obviously got less sprint rate and all sorts of other things going on. It's got new uprights, you've got new dampers. It's not a proper rally car. You couldn't gravel rally it, but it's much more than a normal road car that's just on stilts. I can tell you that by doing this. Great fun. And again, jump. <laughs> it's really, really, actually, do you know what? They've done a really good job of it. We'd like to ask for a moment of your time. There's not much to talk about inside the Dakar, save for the fact that anyone wanting to spend 180,000 on one, this one here is nearly 200,000, should know it's a two-seater only. There are some badges and those rally and off-road modes, but that's about it. it. means you'll have cup holders where you don't want them and window switches too far back on the armrest and, okay, I'm being picky, it's all pretty good. The funky bit is the revised suspension that sits 50 millimeters higher than standard with a lift system that can push that figure 30 millimeters higher still. Top speed is limited to 105 miles an hour on stilts, 149 when lowered. But the main aesthetic difference is the 1920-inch wheel tyre combo with specific Pirelli rubber. They look fantastic and fill those new plastic edge wheel arches to perfection. They have done a really, really good job because it feels so 911. The steering weight is good. The control weights all feel consistent with a, a, just a fast street 911. It oversteers in the most predictable, lovely way. And you know what? They've, they've added a few bits inside. This has got 12 grand's worth of paint and God knows what to give us the fake Rothmans livery. Everything is covered in Alcantara. It's got lots of what they call those push exclusive options on it. And it feels very expensive just because it is. This car, 196 thousand pounds but infuriatingly 
I really like it. Isn't it weird that the 911s look so good, regardless of whether they're sort of muddy rally cars or whether they are circuit cars that have just finished a 24 hour race? The 911 shape lends itself to all of this stuff, I think. I mean, that's. That's silly from an off-road 911. It's got plenty of go. And in here, it sounds fantastic. It's got this weird exhaust system, much louder than a normal 911, I think. I can't let's really try to lob it about a bit. Let's pretend I'm Martin Skanker or Will Gollop, because that's the other side of this. This just feels like Porsche should be back in Rallycross, because it was in the 80s. Fun. It really is. It's a silly car that shouldn't exist, but another one of those that I really am enjoying. It's just a hoot. Okay. 196,000 pounds. I mean, it's objectively ridiculous. But I sort of think it's the coolest 992 variant I've driven. I didn't gel my 992 GT3. But I sort of think this is more desirable. I don't know how I'm going to get shot by the condescenti, aren't I? All you people that know more than I do. But there's something really, really appealing about this motor vehicle. It's fast, it's comfortable, really stands out from the crowd. You just need. You just need to buy your own rally cross track to go with it. 